Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to Tight Line. We're really glad you're with us today. I'm super excited about where we are. We are in Maine uh, on the Penobscot River near Old Town. If you've ever seen Old Town canoes, that's where they make them. And I'm here with my really good friend Bob and my son Lee R. And we're fishing for smallmouth bass. Um, now what we're kind of trying to do is still figure out where they are. The water had been really low and came up over the last week several feet. Um, normally we catch them in holes on crawfish type baits, but yesterday we fished a little bit and a lot of them were real shallow. Um, so we're gonna fish several techniques today, teach you some new stuff and catch a fish we don't get to fish for very often where we're from, and that's a smallmouth bass. Uh, so y'all stay with us, we're really glad you're here. We went out the first morning and Lee R caught the first smallmouth. Oh, it's man. a good one. That they is a good one, Lee R. Just That's keep a that rod up, bud. Good job, buddy. This is about a two pound smallmouth Lee R caught on a bait called a super flute. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but that's the first one of the day. That's a good sign of things to come. We fished really hard this first morning and I finally hooked up with a smallmouth. Nice. nice. He was behind that tree. That's a smallie. He's down there in the grass. There he comes. Come on, buddy. Nice one. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I'll take Little those flute. all day long. <laughs> we finally figured out these fish are not um, deep like they normally are. They're just almost right on the bank. And they are a beautiful fish. Come on, dude. I want you in the boat. Come here. a boy. Finally got one in. <laughs> and he ate it good too. About a pound and a half, pound and a quarter. Pretty small mouth. Let him go and get bigger. I got another one, it's a little one. Little bitty one, but man, they are aggressive and they pull hard, even the little ones. <laughs> small mouth are we mostly fish for largemouth where we live, and these guys pull really hard. But the, if they ever in a place that has both of them, the way you can tell, smallmouth mouth doesn't come to his eye right here. When the mouth is closed, the largemouth comes behind the eye. A spotted bass is even with the eye. We're gonna let him get bigger. Bob was fishing a pearl-colored super fluke, and he hooked up with a smallmouth. That's a small one. I still, look at that one with him. Look at one with him. Keep him in the water. Keep him in the water. Oh, I got one. Look at that. I told you we needed to fish this bank. <laughs> no. Got good. us a double. And they're smallmouth, too. We thought we were going to catch a bunch of pike right here. Man, you were letting him swim to China with it, weren't you? He got, look at that. Just a little tip <laughs> of that fin sticking out. He'd been eating. Now, that's a pretty good one right there. Oh, excuse me. That's a little better one there. There's gonna be one right there. You ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Uh-huh. Oh, running right at me, running right at me, running right at me, running right at me, running right at me. Is it a smallie? Yes, it is. Right where he was supposed to be. Here we go. Here we go. Not a lot of places in the world. 12 o'clock in the afternoon, can you catch one in six inches of water on a top water fluke? You don't want to catch fish this way. We just hit a big old rock, stopped us dead. I slowed my bait down, caught one. Look at that. I've been catching a bunch of little ones. We got stuck on a rock, which sometimes happens on the Penobscot River, uh, but Bob caught a nice one on a speed crawl. And then after that, we decided to call it a morning and went back to the cabin and kind of regrouped for the evening bite. Bob couldn't wait for me to even get the anchor down in this next spot, and he caught a smallmouth. Turns out that the morning wasn't really great fishing. We caught some fish, and you'll see that, but we decided to take a break middle of the day and 
fish some in the evening. We don't have a lot of time, but we feel like the bite may be a little bit better. It may be more of a timing thing. So we're gonna fish from about 5.30 till dark and see how we can do. Uh, Bob tried something a little different. He put a Carolina rig on with a Cinco and caught him a pretty nice one. And what we're hoping is this evening deal may be a little better. You think, Bob? I think. I, I dropped that thing off in that little deep hole right yeah. there and just moved it just a little bit and boom, he was there. What we have here, if you can see it behind him, is a rock that's breaking the current. And he's talking about, and that's what smallmouth want. They want to break in the current. There's a little break down there and he dropped it right in there and that heavier weight he's got was able to get down in that current and he caught him. Bob has hit the deal throwing that little Carolina rig down there. And it's probably cause he can get a little deeper than we can with these smaller ones. Not a bad one, a little better than the ones we're catching up here on the top. Yep. All right, sometimes you can take them and put your hand under them like that and it'll calm them down. Yeah. He's like taking a nap, isn't he? You, like, these things do not like to be still, <laughs> Ooh. but I found that may be the way to do it. I just had a bite right there. There he is, still having a bite. They are right here behind this rock in the break of the current, and they're not giants, but they're, they're small now. And it's way more frequent than they were getting bit this morning, wasn't it, Bob? Yes. <laughs> So this little speed crawl imitates a crawfish. And uh, we got it on the jig head. It's, I'm gonna show you later how to rig that, but uh, bounces down those rocks really good. And then what Bob's throwing is what's called a Carolina rig. It's a big weight, about a half ounce weight. Is that what you got on, Bob? Probably a three quarter. Three quarter ounce weight with about a three foot leader. Watch his line, bud. Got him. And he's getting in that current good, catching them. And it really is happening that quick. Just almost, as soon as you get in the right place, like that, <laughs> that's kind of key. They are, if you can flip right up there where that stuff comes down, that's where they are. And these aren't giants, but boy, are they fun to catch. And you kind of see why a lot of people call them, call them brown bass. Cause they kind of got a brown tint to them. I like to call them brown soups. Brown soups. That means if you, when you put them in the frying pan, <laughs> they get the brown suit on them before you take them out. Yeah, we got, there's a little place down here where the current, fast current comes together with the slower current. We're, we're in like three generations of fish here. I'm in generation one, <laughs> <laughs> and we caught some generation two, and then one or two generation three, I think, but we're getting bites now, and that's what we're happy about, because we were not getting bites earlier. But. Stood behind that rock for 15, 20 minutes and caught a good number, and it started to get dark, and came down this shady bank with some faster moving baits. I'm throwing a fluke, and Bob's throwing a horny toad. You see all those fish came out of his mouth. Look at all that. Well, the horny toad has not been, they've been hitting you every cast. Yeah, I might. I haven't got a lick on a horny toad yet. Yeah, but they have been, they must be up there eating some kind of minnows, because he spit up a whole bunch of them. That's what that fluke imitates. What we've done, we're moved down to our last little spot for the day, probably. We got about five or 10 minutes of light, and this is a top water called a horny toad, and it swims on top like a buzz bait, but it's a little more subtle. And there's a bunch of frogs around this river we've seen. So we're gonna see if our last couple minutes of daylight, we might be able to get a top water bite. There we go. There we go. Come on, buddy. There we go. Stay hooked. Buddy. There we go. Stay on the hook for me, biggin. Good. Is nice and. I don't think so. I think he's bigger than them little bitty ones. Ain't not bad. They're not a bad one. You can put on a show at the end of the day. 
This little frog, he just came up and kind of sucked it in. That's a pretty decent one right there. Not bad at all. Probably the biggest one I caught in the last hour. They do not like to be held, so I'm going to let him calm down a little bit, Bob. You don't want to pull them right away. You want to give them just a second to get it in their mouth, and then, then you hit them. We were losing filming light, so we decided to call it an evening and fish the next evening. So we're still in Maine on the Penobscot River. We've been fishing a couple of days. We've caught a good many fish. Uh, not like we normally do up here, but it's just been great. Um, so we're trying to figure out a little bit different way to catch them. We went out this morning and caught a lot of fish shallow uh, on some topwater baits. Missed a lot of fish. So tonight we're trying to remedy that by fishing with a little smaller bait. Little one. No, he's not that little. That's a really good one, actually running this little speed crawl and that's the cool thing about this bait you can run it on the bottom like a worm you can run it on top swim it in the middle and they kept missing this big top water bait we were using called a horny toad and this one runs basically the same way it's just a little smaller profile bait so you can catch them on it sometimes when they'll miss that other one that's a nice about pound and a half, pound and three quarter Penobscot River smallmouth. Yep. Oh, he's running at me, running at me, running at me. There we go. Another small one, but he's bigger than that other one. Come on in here, buddy. That was awesome. I love seeing them come after it from a long way off. And what happened was we had missed a bunch of fish on the top water and we saw these fish come in and start chasing bait. And I told Alex, I said, that may be that they're, we're throwing the wrong thing because they're chasing a minotype bait and we're throwing a frog imitation. So you really got to pay attention to what's going on around you. I'm going to have to get me another fluke. Look at him. He, he got it. Nope. He came from 20 feet away. Golly, holy mackerel. When a fish does that too, there he is. I got him that time. <laughs> I was gonna say throw right back in there. A lot of times they'll hit it again. That is so cool right there in that really shallow water, isn't it? Look at here, that's a better one too. In this clear water, they're just beautiful. Come right here, brother. What I was gonna tell you though before he interrupted me was when you miss one like that on these smallmouth, don't feel, don't be afraid to throw right back in there because sometimes they'll come right back and get it. Man, that's a pretty one right there. We're kind of fishing a little backwater area. The water, what we understand is the water had come up the last week or so had been way down. And I think when the water came up, the fish just came up with it. I mean, and we're like, we're literally on the bottom catching fish. You got nowhere to go, man. <laughs> Either in the boat or in the gravel. Nice. And, and and if you've never caught a smallmouth, man, they, just the width of their body makes them fight. Even the small ones, they fight really good. Well, it's our last cast of the night. And there he is. I got him. <laughs> Just kept seeing this stump and I kept saying, he has got to be there. And I know y'all probably can't even see him, uh, but it is, oh my goodness, that is so much fun. We're boat dragging the bottom. I saw a stump on the bank, but the root ball blocked the current. And I told Alex, man, if I could just get up there, I bet you there's a fish and sure enough, they do not ever, ever, ever give up. This is a good fish, too. Look at that. Yes, sir. So, Penobscot River, if you live in the Northeast, <laughs> it's a great place to catch them. It's pound, pound and a half. Beautiful smallmouth. Great way to end the night. Awesome. And we will be back tomorrow. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Lord.
The Penobscot River is really one of my favorite places to fish in the whole world. You, you just catch a lot of smallmouth. The beauty is incredible. You see eagles and all kind of wildlife, and, it, and it's just a blast to go up there. But you know, we, we almost didn't make it there. A uh, hurricane came, and if it had been one day later coming, the Atlanta airport would have been closed. We wouldn't have been able to go. Uh, and then when we got there on our way to the cabin, it's, it's in a very rustic area, as you probably noticed. There were actually two trees down across the road, uh, and, and we had to figure out how to get through that obstacle. And you know, a lot of times life is that way. Life throws you obstacles, and you, you try to figure out how to get around them. You know, there's, sometimes there's financial strain, sometimes there's job problems, sometimes there's relationship problems, and they're, they're all obstacles in your life that you have to overcome. You know, there's a story in the Bible, it's a great picture of how to overcome obstacles. It's, it's in the Old Testament, and it's Moses leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. And, and they literally come to a sea, and they're against the sea, and there's an army coming to kill them, and that's the obstacle. Man, how are we supposed to get across this sea? And they're complaining, as we typically do a lot of times, but this is what Moses says to them, and this is a lesson we need to learn about overcoming obstacles in our lives. It says this in uh, Exodus chapter 14, starting with verse 13. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. He will bring it to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And so... That's the lesson that we need to learn. Moses' complete trust was in God. Even though he was against an ocean, God took care of him. He parted the ocean, they walked across, and then God shut the ocean behind him. Man, what an obstacle to overcome. And that's the lesson we need to learn today, to put our trust in God, and he's going to overcome obstacles for us. So as you face obstacles in your life, trust God with them, and he's going to take care of you. And maybe right now in your life, you go, man, I, I can't have that trust because I don't have a relationship with him. Really, all you have to do is, you know, confess to him that you, you are a sinner, uh, that you believe what Jesus did for you on the cross, and ask him to come and live in your, in your heart. Hey, thanks so much for listening today. We went out for our last morning, and it was a great morning uh, because it was overcast and it was foggy. So we had low light for a pretty long period of time. Anytime you have low light, whether it's cloud cover or fog, it's a great time to go fishing. The fish seem to be more active. Big and two, man. All of eight inches. Oh, he's better than I thought he was. <laughs> no eight inch fish. Up there in a foot man, six of water, six inches. Six inches. Pull that fish to the right, boy. Well, Come on, son. We are just in nothing. Oh, look how pretty he Get is. Get him, Goober. Golly. Oh, he's throwing stuff up all over. Crawfish guts. I don't know. Can you see that, Bob? Look. E. That's an almost two pound Penobscot River special. And that's what we're doing this morning. Got out early and it's foggy. And gosh, we weren't in six inches of water. We're going to try to catch us some more. There's one. A little bitty one. Yeah. That's the one you thought you that's had. That's the one I thought. <laughs> You talked a little bit with me about that the other day and a couple of the other guys about how kind of hunting and fishing kind of dominated your life, but kind of spiritually at some point you realize that wasn't the right thing. Can you tell me a little about that? Because like, a lot of guys, that happens in their lives. They just, they let the outdoors just become their God. And, and I was probably guilty of that yeah. for, you know, years My as I was as a younger adult. and. You know, we just had some things, my wife and I both had a, had some things happen over the last couple of years that made you realize that nothing you have right. is yours. God's given you everything you've got. It's all His, um, and it can be taken away at, in a moment, whether it's your livelihood or your health or whatever. And it just, it made me kind of reassess my priorities. And it's certainly, nowadays, it's fun to do this but it's not something that I've got to have. I could do without it right. if I had to. There's lots more important things. And that's a lot of us, you know, kind of made you realize you, it's more about giving back and, you know, being generous and 
just doing things that are biblical. We continued to fish with the Pearl Super Flute and we're really catching a lot of fish on it. It's about a pound and what I'm doing with this fluke, I'm fishing it real fast to start and then I'm slowing it down and we're dying to tail that Pearl Flute just a little bit chartreuse. Can't catch up with him. Can't catch up with him. That's pretty nice. That's what I was missing. Man, that was very cool. We saw him coming from like That's what the 20 feet did. away. Come here, buddy. Yeah, look at that. Not a bad that one. That is awesome. That's a two or three pounder right here. Even though I don't want to swing him in the boat. I'm you better lip him. Get out down here and belly grab him. There we go. Nice. That. Really nice. Like I can, we've been missing them on these top water things and I tend to be hooking up better on, but look how, how wide they are. It's just beautiful. He's running right at Get me. Get him, Goober. He's running right straight at me. They are liking the fluke this morning. All right, you convinced me. <laughs> we just couldn't seem to hook up on, and you can do that a lot of times. You can, if you, like fishing a bait like a topwater, if you keep missing and keep missing and keep missing, it means they're not really wanting to eat it. And so, went to something a little different, and you can run this on top. But uh, you can also fish it underneath. Big. Big, that's the biggest one of the trip right there. I don't, he looked that way at first, yeah. then he got littler. <laughs> he was right on the end of that log and I saw the whole thing. Man, that was very, very cool. Very cool. Come on, big boy. There we go. Right. Catching a lot of them this size this morning, pound and a half, two pounds. I would say, I, I can't say that. He ain't the biggest one of the No, trip. I don't think so. Oh, do it, buddy. We are got him one from the back of the boat. What you throwing there, big man? Super fluke, his favorite. <laughs> There's an eagle. Can you see him? Look at that, Lee. That's a young bald eagle. Boy, they're just completely silent too, aren't they? It's awesome. Beautiful. Got him, Bob? Looked like a large mouth behind him. Really? Good job, buddy. Big, big. <laughs> but you know what they say? What's that? It's all right. <laughs> the bee little bitty. Bob was throwing that horny toad. Boy, did they just keep missing it and missing it. Wasn't anything he was doing wrong. They were just hitting short. And he put the fluke on and started getting bit. Just don't know. Never know. Whacking uh, smallies, boys. What you got there, Bob? Got me a little small mouth bass. You were telling me about when you were eight and you felt the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart in a revival. Oh yeah, I mean I went down, you know, after I talked to the pastor and got saved and that little First Baptist Church in Colquitt, Georgia was a great place to learn. When I was there from um, eight to 13 uh -huh. before we moved to Columbus. Of course, my folks were, have, have been involved in church all my life and taught. Dad was a choir director and always been involved. So I've always gone to church and always been um, involved. Now, there's certainly been times in my life where I was, um, I guess, kind of gotten away from my first love. Right. Right. Being Christ, but he's never left me and never let me go, and, I'm, and it's always, you know, been brought back, and that's what's so great about grace to me. Mm hmm. Is um, thankfully you can make a mistake as a Christian and 
and what he did 2,000 years ago for you covers all of that. That's Anything exactly you can right. Do. Oop, there he is. That's a great way to end up talking about what Jesus did. You got a fish, <laughs> but I owe him everything. That's right. He's not a monster. He's a nice one, though. That's a nice that's fish. A pretty fish. That's typical to me. That's kind of what you, you know, A lot of what we catch here is pound, pound and a half, pound, pound and three quarters. Bring it on home, son. Bring it on home. I don't know how big he is. I haven't really felt him or seen him much yet. That's a pretty good one there, Bob. Not bad at all. Everywhere we stop in real shallow water where we got a good current break, we'll be able to catch one. Just kind of what we've been catching all morning, pound, pound and a half, two pounders. And it is some more fun. Our good friend Steve lives in the area and he helps us out a lot when we come up. We only get to come once a year. Um, so after we got done fishing, we went and talked to him for a little while about the Penobscot River. The fishing's just incredible. They've taken out most of the dams that are in the middle of a restoration act for this river. And it's already showing because a largemouth bass was caught four or five days ago, first largemouth bass that I know of ever caught up here on the Penobscot. And a guy from Georgia caught it. And a guy from Georgia caught it. You can't see him because he's running the camera. That's Alex. Oh, that's awesome. But this river is, the main river is 109 miles long. You take the tributaries that feed in east and west, then you've got two other rivers that feed into it. It's about 250 miles of river. So Steve, you were telling me a little bit about some of the industry along here, and one of the ones that's really interesting to me is the logging industry. Tell us a little bit about that and the history of that here, particularly your history of that here on the river. Logging has always been a real big deal on this river. And uh, years and years ago, before there was any welfare or any social help, either you worked or you starved to death. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, who lived to be 97, he was born in 1892. In 1903, he was 11 years old, he went to work on the river drives because he had to. He wow, was the man 11. of the family. He wow. was 11 years old. Two years later, when he turned 13, he went to the boss of the drive and he said, I'm doing a man's work. I'd like to have a man's wages. 13-year-old boy and they gave him a man's wages. And Steve, it's cool coming here because Steve lives here and he always helps us out. You know, we can't, clearly we can't pull boats up here so he lines up boats for us and everything. And so we just really appreciate him and his hospitality. So thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Man, we had a great week fishing on the Penobscot River. It's a great smallmouth fishery. If you're ever close by, you should stop in and fish. I also want to thank Bob Sr., Bob Jr., and Steve for the great week that we had there. Thanks for joining us this week.